Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. As for me, in justice I shall behold your face. I shall be filled with the vision of your glory. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. As we gather this morning to celebrate the sacred mysteries of our faith, we pause for a moment to seek God's love and mercy. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the Father that we would be assured of God's love. Lord, have mercy. You have died and rose again that we would be reconciled to God. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have called us to lead others into the glory of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. Leading the flock across the desert, he came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There an angel of the Lord appeared to him in fire, flaming out of a bush. As he looked on, he was surprised to see that the bush, though on fire, was not consumed. So Moses decided, I must go over to look at this remarkable sight and see why the bush is not burned. When the Lord saw him coming over to look at it more closely, God called out to him from the bush, Moses, Moses. He answered, Here I am. God said, Come no nearer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. I am the God of your father, he continued, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. The cry of the children of Israel has reached me, and I have truly noted that the Egyptians are oppressing them. Come now. I will send you to Pharaoh to lead my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and lead the children of Israel out of Egypt? He answered, I will be with you, and this shall be your proof that it is I who have sent you. When you bring my people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this very mountain. The word of the Lord. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful. 
He pardons all your iniquities. He heals all your ills. He redeems your life from destruction. He crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord secures justice and the rights of all the oppressed. He has made known his ways to Moses and his deeds to the children of Israel. The Lord is kind and merciful. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to the little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the childlike. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. The Gospel of the Lord. So at this point in the saga from Exodus, we have Moses having this great experience of God uh, on the mountain. Uh, wouldn't we all like to have such an experience? But <coughs> I think we need to always remember when you read the whole story from the scripture, uh, I think Moses really does stand for us as a great example uh, as someone called by God for a very special role, and yet who was at first hesitant. I mentioned this the other day. Moses is caught off guard as he comes face to face with this great mystery of the divinity who in the burning bush eventually um, reveals himself more and more. Finally, in the story, Moses wants to know uh, what is God's name and then He's given this uh, I am who am, the Tetranomagram or whatever it's called. It's the, it's the holy name of God, which Jews to this day will not even say that or say God, right? But eventually, Moses gives in to how God is giving him a command, how God is calling him. I was reading in uh, the devotional that we even provide here, uh, The Word Among Us, a commentary uh, that we forget that Moses, like other biblical leaders, are very unlikely heroes. We could say this even about the saints of the Christian church. If you look at the story, even from the other day, Moses was a murderer, and then he was found out, remember? That's why he goes off to Midian in hiding. Uh, he also struggled with a speech impediment, and he also had a price on his head as he went off to Midian and he becomes a humble shepherd for his father-in-law. Jesus also gives praise that his own followers have been given a revelation that is hidden from the wise, the powerful, and the learned, as it says in today's gospel. And it becomes the story of the early church, first with the apostles who have all kinds of flaws of their own, and then many simple people who are on fire with the Holy Spirit, uh, who live in Jesus, even at great odds with society. So here begins this great tradition of heroes and leaders, often coming from obscurity, or if 
even powerful in society, as like some of the saints were, they're willing to give everything up to be humble for the sake of what God wants to do. We call it the kingdom of God. Today, we should not forget that each one of us is in some way called to be an emissary for the gospel. We, in our own baptism, it says that we are priests, prophets, and kings. So we have a royal inheritance. We are to speak and act prophetically. Um, and we become some way, in the, the priesthood of all believers, uh, a, a mediator between God and other people. It's a great responsibility, uh, but yet it's also a word of comfort for many, as well as a word of challenge. Uh, it's all for the edification, I think, of our own human condition and for our own future with God, as we more and more announce the kingdom of, of God, the kingdom of heaven. The Christian church has been called from the beginning. They are not called as individuals or alone, even though some people have personal religious experiences like Moses did, but it is always to be part of others. Even Moses did that as he came down to lead the people to their freedom. Um, we can soar to our own great heights, but we always have to remember that we are being called together and to lift one another up. Each one of us has particular gifts or talents, and that is always not for ourselves, but for the good of others. That's how the Spirit of God works. That's how the Spirit of God empowers us, even as God's own Spirit empowered Moses to lead his people. The Christian life, I think, is both an energizing power as well as a very humbling experience. We know we're not perfect. We've all fallen short of the glory of God, as it says uh, in St. Paul, and yet we are given a spirit of reconciliation, as he says. We can be forgiven of our sins and do wonderful things to reconcile others to God. We should never we should never see ourselves as not worthy. We should always know that we can be part of change in society or even in the world, even in small ways. Uh, St. Teresa of Calcutta, uh, who herself had her own struggles, graced us with her wisdom often, uh, and she is said to have said, not all of us can do great things, but we all can do small things with great love. Let us pray for God's wisdom and strength that we would live in faith and in trust. For all our church leaders, including Pope Francis, the Petrine Minister, the Bishop of Rome, and all the bishops of the world, and all those who pastor individual congregations, that they continually be attentive to the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. For world leaders to understand the strength that comes in humility and always seek the dignity and health of others as they listen to their people, we pray to the Lord. For the many challenges that face the world in this 21st century, that we all work together to end hatred and violence, to end the polarization that divides us, especially in these days, we pray to the Lord. For each of us to understand the blessing we can be for others, and that we could work together as a force for good and demonstrate good Christian leadership ourselves, we pray to the Lord. For those who have lost their dignity or their livelihood, or their health, to never forget that God prepares a place for them with great love and the assurance of the fullness of healing, we pray to the Lord. And for our beloved dead, especially Louis Rufola, 
to now come into the divine presence of the Lord for all eternity. We pray to the Lord. And perhaps we can pause for a moment to remember the prayers that other people have asked of us or the prayers that are silent in our hearts. Um, I got a text from my sister the other day praying for a family who had bought our mom's house. Uh, the granddaughter is suffering. She's only seven years old and she's suffering from a brain tumor. So we all have people who ask us to pray for them. Let us pause for a moment to remember. We pray to the Lord. Gracious God, we trust in the many ways you call us. Hear our prayers this day that we might grow ever deeper in your love and live more fully in truth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, gift of the earth, work of human hands, may become for us the bread of life. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, may become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable before our almighty and loving God. Lord, look upon the offerings of the church as she makes her prayers to you. Grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is always right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies, ever faithful God. You have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as Lord and Redeemer. Jesus always showed compassion for the children, for those who were poor, for those who were sick and for sinners, Jesus became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name as we sing the hymn of your glory without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy to be glorified, O God, who love the human race, who always walk with us on this journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we pray, Send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, Jesus took bread, he said the blessing, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, he gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, gracious Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. We offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your son in whose body and blood we have this sacred communion. Bring your people, Lord, the church to perfect faith and charity together with Francis our Pope with Blaise, our bishop, with all bishops, priests, deacons, those in religious life, and the entire people you have called to be your own. Open our eyes that we would see the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire us by what we say and by what we do, that we would comfort those who labor and are burdened. Allow us to serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to lead people to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all would be raised up to a new hope. We pray for our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, especially as we remember this day your servant Louis. Bring him and all the dead whose faith you alone have known to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. And grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Holy Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, the glorious martyrs, and with all of the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of the church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us turn to one another and offer some sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him, says the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. Hallelujah. And so we pray. Having consumed these gifts, Lord, we pray that by our participation in this sacred mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow ever strong through Christ Jesus our Lord. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God be with you, Father, Son, and 
and Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace to truly love and to serve the Lord.